a very good facility in Hilo mm -hmm. and a very good facility in Kona. And then we have this wonderful facility in Waimea, North Hawaii, each of which has different resources and different focus. But this new bill allows you, if I'm not mistaken, regionally or as both mm -hmm. regions, to come up with some kind of relationship uh, more mm -hmm. formal with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that they will be, as a private hospital, be uh, less uh, reticent about forming a partnership with our state hospital system because they see that that's kind of the, um, that's the train track that we're heading down. And I, I really believe that uh, there's going to be all kinds of new innovations. I can foresee a, a time where North Hawaii says, um, as the private hospital says, you know what, we're thinking about hiring a very fancy um, pediatric specialist, but we really only can employ them three days a week or two days a week. Would you guys benefit from sharing that position 20%? Um, we'll help them come to Hilo. We'll help them come to Kona for consultations, but we're a little too remote to, mm -hmm. to pay a full salary and all that team. And we, as Big Islanders, we might see incredible new expansion of services if people don't have that isolated, I'm in my silo of right. healthcare. Yes. And, and I'm hopeful that that's one of the things that this bill allows us to do and also makes you guys feel comfortable doing. Yes. But you'll have to tell us, I, I think that's important. You know, along those lines, uh, I think Earl would agree. I don't want to speak for Earl, but I think truly we need to work with our physicians in a more you know, unified fashion to put these services and programs together. I mean, I think that's truly where it's at to respond to these needs. So we have to roll up our sleeves and look at improving these services for these, for these various communities. Yeah, I'd just like to comment on that, agree with what Howard is saying, and touch on something that you, you mentioned, Josh, and it was, it's spot on. Uh, the opportunity for us to more easily partner with each other, um, as well as with uh, North Hawaii Community Hospital, as an example. Some of our viewers may not know this, but we do share some resources between the facilities. Hilo and, and Kona are about 100 miles apart. Makes it a lot harder to share to share things, but as an example, uh, lithotripsy, uh, that, that uh, particular piece of equipment used for urological procedures, uh, we share that with each other. Some folks may not realize that uh, uh, North Hawaii and Kona Hospital um, we share an oncologist, Dr. Tony DeSalvo, yeah. spends most of his time at Kona Hospital where we've got the radiation oncology uh, center as well as an infusion center, but he holds clinic up at North Hawaii one day per week. Uh, John White, the new CEO at North Hawaii Community Hospital, he's f relatively new to the job, a couple of weeks into it. Uh, he and I have had some early conversations about the opportunity to partner and work together and solve these challenges that we have together. Uh, in fact, he and I are having dinner this evening to talk about some of these opportunities. I, I'd like to weigh in on the issue about uh, opportunities with this bill to build really a system. And I think that we would all agree that part of the problem with the American healthcare system, it is so fragmented mm -hmm. and it's fragmented by provider silos and insurance types and all kinds of things. And so I really think that this is a very important foundation to allow us all to be working together, uh, hospital to hospital, private provider to hospital and among each other, and with the community health centers as well. And I think that this is a very important step forward. I am really looking forward to that. Well, heck, on that, on that issue, I mean, uh, just very briefly, uh, in in uh, Pahala Hospital, they already have a small clinic, which is not one of our health centers set up, uh, but they have opportunities for collaboration. It, in Kohala, I live literally between the hospital and a community health center, which are about 30 meters on either side. And it's uh, to not utilize that kind of partnership, whether it's sharing uh, information, sharing uh, doctors or nurses, uh, it, it seems sometimes crazy to me that we don't take these opportunities. So I think that um, maybe we've all been waiting for a signal that it's okay to begin. Uh, I know it's co a complicated system that, God help us with this American healthcare yeah. system, with billing this and insurance company that, but I think we're, I think we're gonna see in the next five years, maybe Hawaii will lead the way in some of these um, partnerships. And maybe it will translate into uh, these ideas 
being used on the mainland because there's going to be a shortage of prov health care providers and there's going to be a shortage of money for health care, for sure, uh, nationally and in Hawaii. So if we don't start doing these things, we won't be able to take care of everybody. And, and the crisis on the Big Island is a perfect place to start. Yeah. This is really an opportunity for us to all be improving the system. Right. Well, you know, I really like the idea about this integrated healthcare service kind of model. And so tell me how we can help with that. Or is, is there an appropriate role for the legislature to play not only between your relationships, but you know, there's also the Native Hawaiian health community programs and the long-term care facilities. So, you know, if, if if we really want to think big picture at this point, how can you know how can we help with that? Do we try to convene all of you to to talk about how we can you know what obstacles there might be or what positive aspects we need to emphasize? I, I think that that would be a, a very important role for you. You certainly are influential with all of us out in the community and to convene us and to ask us to work together and to find out if there are barriers to doing just that, how we overcome them. So conven convening is, is an important okay. role. I would agree. I think, a, um, I think there's a summit coming soon or some kind of panel discussion with some expert uh, maybe presenters would be a good uh, forum to to get some uh, ideas out in the open um, and so yeah I think we need to continue to educate look for ways to sensitize the communities to the issues and to the needs but then to also have that you know discussion about where we should go and come up with some real good um, plans together mm -hmm. well let me ask you this though that do you think the Big Island should be the venue, or do you think we, we should do this statewide? Well, I'm, I'm biased, of course, <laughs> Russell. Um, I, I'm focusing in on, on the Big Island. Of course, it's, it's a state issue. It's, it's a national issue. Whatever attention we can give to, the, to this at a policy level, I think, is important. Uh, Howard mentioned it earlier, the, uh, I call it HIHA, the Hawaii Island uh, Healthcare Alliance, mm -hmm. has been working on a number of these questions. Um, the group over the last uh, year and a half has evolved, membership has evolved, uh, we've changed our name a couple of times, but that group is looking at some of these important policy questions. I think that might be the group that we look at as, as the model for uh, the entire uh, state to follow, if not the nation. Mm -hmm. But, but that is, it, that's Hawaii Island, yeah? Correct. So maybe we, is, is that more feasible if we start with the island? Mm -hmm. It seems yeah. like, yeah. Uh, you know, the, geographically we're so large and there seems to be such a diversity within our rural communities and, and it seems like there's a wide variety of healthcare services being provided. So, you know, how do we integrate all of that into, you know, yes. a real functional unit? I, I think it's a yeah, the managing the, I think Beth was going to say the same thing, managing the continuum of care is, is an incredible challenge. She said it uh, earlier, the, the healthcare is so fragmented. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to go to different providers or different locations depending on which stage of, of your illness you're in or what type of mm -hmm. illness that, that you have. Uh, that's a real challenge for people to understand how complicated that is. Mm -hmm. Senator, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up the Family Practice Residency Program, mm -hmm. just to mention real quick sure. that um, it's moving ahead. Uh, as you know, the funding was not there uh, last year, but the hospital has agreed to step, step up and continue to provide uh, what's needed to get this going. Uh, it's a two-part program, for example. We first want to get the clinic up and running, and then uh, after we get um, a certain number of volume or the volume and then we get faculty we'll be able to set up the, pre the residency program but um, I just encourage uh, everyone to be mindful of the need for physicians on our big island and once we get them here it's going to be essential to do all we can to support them to stay and with that becomes reimbursement the reimbursement that needs to be addressed for the physicians uh, particularly, so that's a, maybe a can of worms on one uh, in one aspect, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Well, I think the, that's a common denominator, though. Actually.